Hey guys, Marauder here, and welcome to another collection update. I, of course, have everything in front of me that I've purchased since the last collection update, which was a couple of months ago. Not a whole lot to show off, but I do have a few things, and as usual, I'll go through them, kind of talk about them each a little bit, and hopefully give you guys some recommendations, and uh, hopefully you see something you're interested in. But let's get this going. Not anything retro, really, to, uh, this time around. Stuck mostly to the current gen stuff. Um, Alright, so first things first, we'll talk about some DS games I picked up. First thing is a copy of Aliens Infestation. This is a game that I was curious about when it was originally released, but I'm not a massive Aliens fan. Like I like the series and all, I have all the movies and I watch them a lot, but I'm not like a massive, massive Aliens fan. Still, um, a friend of mine, Sandalfon, picked this up, says it was great, said it was like Metroid, and anything like Metroid I'm usually into checking out. Found this for just under $10 at a Target, I think it was, on clearance. So I picked it up, and yeah, it's pretty much like Metroid with aliens, um, except it has permadeath, so you pick up various members in your squad, and once they, once they die, they're just gone. And, uh... It gives the game a really interesting mechanic, really interesting feel to it, in that you're desperately trying to keep uh, your squad members alive. And, yeah, so it's kind of like Fire Emblem in that way, where it's got, once they're dead, they're dead. So, uh, if, if you're into that kind of game, check it out. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, at that same store, I picked up a copy of Mega Man ZX. I had no idea what this was um, when I saw it. It just said Mega Man on it. I'd never heard of ZX, so I bought it because it was... I think this one was $20, but... I thought that was a fair price because I know Mega Man games, especially since Capcom's not making any more of them, um, at least not right now, uh, tend to be pretty expensive anyway. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's your general Mega Man game. It plays more like Mega Man... Um, Oh, what was that series on Game Boy Advance? The Mega Man Zero Collection kind of plays like that. It's got a sprawling overworld where you go into different doors to get into the different levels and complete your objectives, but... Uh, yeah, plays really well, looks great. It's a real shame they haven't done any more Mega Man games because I want them to uh, really badly, but... Uh, pretty good game, especially for 20 bucks. Okay, so moving on, we will move on to... Uh, let's see, my Wii U... I picked up two games for my Wii U recently. Uh, the first one is Mario Kart 8. I know there's been a lot of people that have reviewed it, talked about it, and I've talked about it myself on the podcast that I do. Uh, so for those of you who have listened to Welcome to Bonus Stage, you'll know my you'll know my thoughts on this immediately. Uh, I think it's the best Mario Kart game ever. I honestly think it's it's fantastic. Uh, just the 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 depth of gameplay the, the the breadth of of options and levels and and just the way things play it's, it's just it is the best Mario Kart game I think they've ever done and uh, the only thing that bothers me is they released a bunch of DLC levels for it and again people know how I feel about DLC but I bought it because Mario Kart, Mario Kart 8 is just that good and there's options to select the DLC, but none of it's released yet. So it kind of felt like I knew I was pre-ordering it. But I'm like, if I'm just going to pre-order it, then don't show me this stuff all the time. Because you're just getting me more and more anxious and more and more pissed off for it to release. But uh, yeah, no, I'm still playing this. Uh, every once in a while, it's great. I play it with uh, my friends when they come over and things. And it's just fantastic. Um, I still prefer Mario, or excuse me, Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed, over this. But this is the best Mario Kart game ever, and one of the best racers. Period. And I'm putting it up there with games like uh, Burnout and things like that. I mean, it's just it is just a really good, solid game. Is it a system seller? If you don't already have a Wii U, I don't know. That's up for you, you know, for you to decide. But I'm very happy with it. Uh, the other Wii U game I picked up which uh, launched recently, is Hyrule Warriors. Um, it's Dynasty Warriors. 
if you want the short and sweet version. If you like Dynasty Warriors, play this. Uh, if you don't like Dynasty Warriors, don't play this, because that's what it is. Granted, they put on a very generous coat of The Legend of Zelda paint all over it. Um, even some of the bosses have to, de have to be defeated, just like in the Zelda games. But it's still, at its core, a Dynasty Warriors game. Um, I'm enjoying this a lot. Uh, I, I've been playing it since its launch. I actually went out at midnight to get it. And, uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. It's uh, just beautiful. It's one of the best-looking games on the system. Um, my only complaint is, and this is going to sound weird, I don't like the multiplayer. Uh, basically, they only have local co-op, and they make one person use the tablet controller, and one person gets the TV. And that's the only way it can be done. So you can't even do like traditional split-screen like in every other Dynasty Warriors-style game. Uh, which would generally be fine, and I wouldn't have a problem with it, except when you play two-player, the graphics on the TV, like, they get almost cut in half. Um, obviously you're playing two-player, so I understand, but, but I mean, they drop so drastically that it, it, the game looks, it goes from looking really, really nice to, you know less so. I don't really know how to describe it. It's It it just looks awful, and uh, honestly, the pop-in gets far worse, and the the game is just not any fun in two-player, at least for me. Um, so, and I know that's going to sound weird to people, like, I don't like the multiplayer in a Dynasty Warriors game, but I think, honestly, if they'd have just made it traditional split-screen, and let each person have a general controller, and just nix the tablet altogether, um, I think it would be a far better experience, but that's just me. So I don't play this in two-player. I've only played it a, f a handful of times with people, and I don't prefer to play it that way. Um, I don't know. You might think differently, but that's just how I think. Overall, the game's good. Um, I mean, it's Dynasty Wars. And again, they announced a bunch of DLC for it, which I probably won't pick up because I'm not... I don't really care for it. It's like an extra character and some extra levels, and it's like, eh. Nothing too interesting. Whereas whereas Mario Kart 8, something that, you know, has a good multiplayer component, I could see the, the value they're adding with the DLC, but in Hyrule Warriors, I, I think I got what I paid for. I think I'm pretty happy with it. As it stands. Um, Alright, well, we'll move on to my handhelds, because I have a few to talk about. We'll go to my PS Vita first. Um, the PlayStation Vita has really picked up recently. Um, it's it's honestly been fun to watch uh, as more and more games come out. The thing about it is, though, I end up having to order most of these online because a lot of stores just don't carry a wide selection of Vita games. A lot of them, including the store that I work for, still only has pretty much the launch library and very little else. I think my store just got the Borderlands 2 game. Like, that's how far behind they are. So while the Vita has a great selection of titles, you're going to have to go digging for them, and, and, and it's even worse than, say, for a, a system like... I Like, you know, like previous systems where you had you had to go... Like the Wii, where you had to go looking for games, because at least GameStop would carry uh, Wii games. GameStop carries very few uh, Vita games, and the ones that they do carry are not the ones that I'm particularly interested in playing. Um, but, you know, if you go digging, you'll find them. So I, I have three new Vita games. And the first game I'll talk about is I picked up a copy of Dragon's Crown. I picked this up at a GameStop because I had a coupon for percentages off or whatever. And, uh, um, it's, okay. The reason I bought Dragon's Crown was because my friend Phoenix was gonna was buying it as well, same day. Because I thought, oh, it'd be great, two-player action, side-scrolling, like, it'd be great. And it's... It's... It's not. Because what you have to do is you have to beat the game first, unlock the multiplayer. Which, for a game of this style, just reeks of poor design... You, you would think that with a game in this style, in this you know side scrolling beat 'em up style, you'd want to play two player, and they make you beat the game first, 
to unlock the multiplayer. And so I honestly have very little reason to play this because the whole reason I bought it was to play multiplayer, which I can't do until I beat the game. Um, so it's, you know, I, I think that was a really stupid thing they did. Um, otherwise, it, it I mean, it, it is a good game. It plays well. It looks great. Um, I don't have any problem with the character designs, as I've read. Some people had a problem with some of the character designs. I don't at all. Um, yeah, it, the game looks great, plays great. It's a fun game. I just wish that they would give you the access to the multiplayer right away so that I wouldn't have to f slog through the single-player mode by myself in order to do with it what I plan to do with it at the very beginning, which is to play with my friends. Um, I know there's a th PS3 version. I haven't played that one, so I don't know how they compare. I've only, I only have that one. But it's also on PS3 if you're interested. Another game that actually is on PS3 as well that I got on the Vita is Akiba's Trip. This is a really quirky very Japanese game. Uh, it's an RPG where you go around uh, essentially a recreation of Akihabara fighting vampires, but the way that you defeat them is actually quite clever. Uh, the combat system's uh, like a beat-em-up, like a traditional beat-em-up, and what you do is you, you basically beat them until their clothes fall off and then you throw them into the sunlight and they explode. Um, it's it's just, it's just so quirky, I can't even believe it. And, uh, I, you know, I, the recreation of Akihabara is great. Obviously, I've never been there myself, but I mean, it, it looks like, it looks like an actual city. It looks like an actual living, breathing city. Um, the graphics are amazing. The, the gameplay is great. I don't know how else to, how to, uh, excuse me, how else to explain this other than, if you're into quirky Japanese games, this is certainly one to pick up. Some of the dialogue is fantastic. Uh, you know, a lot of fourth wall breaking, um, you know, pokes at itself, pokes at the genre. And it's just fantastic. I highly, highly recommend this um, to anybody who's who wants something fresh and new. Because this is just so fresh and so interesting. And unlike anything else I've ever played. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Pick it up, play it. It's fantastic. Moving on, uh, the last game on my PlayStation Vita is this is the Dagon Rampa Goodbye Despair Collector's Edition. This was available on NIS America's website. Um, I think I paid sixty dollars for this or sixty-five dollars for this. I want to say. Um, for those of you who've watched unboxings, you know what's in the box. There's a gold coin, or a Monokuma coin, there's a pair of sunglasses, there's a copy of the game, obviously, the soundtrack, an art book. Um, nothing, nothing that you wouldn't see in a traditional collector's edition. The, the coin, though, I will say the, the Monokuma coin that's in here is, is quite heavy and very well, very well cast, very well made. Um, I have not played this yet. I, I have another game in the stack that has been sucking up my time, both portably and on the on, at home. But I, I just recently beat the first game, and for those of people who have played the first game, I want to know what where the story goes from there. So had to pick this up. Very happy to have it. Uh, very big box. I mean, let's just compare a second. This is, you know, standard DVD size case here. And it is just, it is just dwarfed by this box, um, which is fantastic. I always enjoy when they come in oversized boxes because it makes you feel like you're getting more, I guess, for your money. Um, yeah, it's, and you know, again, I, I played a little of this just to get through the the beginning tutorials and such, which tell you nothing more than the first game did. So if you've played the first game, you can pretty much jump right into this one. It plays. Oh, you know, exactly the same. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get deeper into it, but there's a, a few games that have been taking up my time. Uh, my 3DS, I picked up two games. Uh, this one I picked up the same night I picked up, uh, Hyrule Warriors. And it is Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, I have not played this yet. 
at all. Um, I have played the Phoenix Wright games, at least a couple of them that I have on the DS, and I do enjoy them. Granted, they're kind of one-and-done things, but, you know, they're, they're fun. And Professor Layton, my sister, has all the Professor Layton games on the original DS, and so I have played through all of them as well. I don't own them myself, but she does, so... Uh, when this game was released, I definitely had to pick it up, because I wanted to see how it... how they melded the two worlds together. And... It is just fantastic, from what I've heard, anyway. Uh, my friend Phoenix has this game and has beaten it and is playing through it again. And he says it's 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 everything you would want it to be. And uh, yeah, I know that I know that I said I don't buy Capcom games, and I don't uh, because I I'm kind of boycotting them at the moment. But this is published by Nintendo, you know. And, with a collaboration between Level 5 and Capcom. It's published by Nintendo over here for the 3DS. So for this one, I'll give them credit, I guess. <laughs> or I'll, 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 I'll break my embargo and buy it. Um, yeah, it, I can't wait to get into this. I'm sure it's going to be a blast. But unfortunately, there's another game that I'm about to tell you about that has been taking up all of my 3DS time. And of course, it being past the 3rd of October... It is Super Smash Brothers for 3DS. Uh, I can't believe they stuck with that title. I, I don't like the title, but that's fine. I don't care. This game is amazing. This game is everything I wanted it to be and more. Um, it plays great. Uh, the, the selection of characters is amazing. The, 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 the frame rate is great. The gameplay is perfect. The, the controls are tight. I just cannot believe... I didn't like Brawl very much. I loved the 64 version, I loved the, the GameCube version even more, uh, and Brawl really fell short on a lot of points for me. Um, I essentially just unlocked all the characters and shelved it. Uh, I had no interest in playing it at all. I hated the tripping mechanic, I hated the, the sloppy controls, I hated I hated the, uh, the, the way the characters were balanced. Um, and I'm not one of those people that, like, you know, plays tournament all the time, and I know they have, like, those tiers where you can't play certain characters. No, I just hated playing against certain characters in general. Like, I didn't like the fact that my friend always picked Snake, because he was ridiculously overpowered in comparison to everyone else. Um, yeah, but I mean, this game fixes everything about that game. This is, this is what Brawl should have been. And I cannot wait for the Wii U version, which I will be picking up, uh, at midnight launch as well. Um, as to how these are supposed to link up, I don't know. Um, but it should be in some form. I don't know. The way they were talking about it, it's like, I don't even know if it's going to be worth buying both versions. But since I already have a Wii U, and I love this series to death, I'm going to be picking it up. No questions asked. Um, but yeah, I, I would tell you to pick it up, but apparently it's sold out everywhere anyway, so my opinion wouldn't matter. Um, it's just, it's, it's everything that I wanted from a Smash Brothers game. And more. Anyway, moving on to the last two games in my stack, both of which are for my PS3. And these are some of the more interesting ones that I have, um... I bought these both off NIS America's website. I've had them on pre-order since I think the pre-orders went live. Oh no, well, one of them I, I grabbed late, but they still had a few. And uh, I'll talk about this one first because I have more to say about the other one. But this is the, off NIS America's website, they had a game called Arno Surge, Ode to an Unborn Star. And... This is the collector's edition off of NIS America's website that has a soundtrack, the game, an art book, and a poster in it. Again, nothing you, more you would see from any other collector's edition. However, I was drawn in more or less by this game's art style. Um, it looks like Fantasy Star Online mixed with... Um, Oh, I can't remember the name of it right now. It was that one on 360 where you played as like a bunch of gunmen. Resonance of Fate. It's like they took Resonance of Fate and they mixed it with Fantasy Star. 
Uh, the combat system looked interesting, at least from what videos I saw on YouTube. And I had a whole bunch of gift cards from buying other stuff off their website, so I just applied them towards this. Unfortunately, I have not played it at all yet, um, because the other game in the stack has been sucking up all of my time. But I'm looking forward to getting into this one. This one looks incredibly interesting, and I'm happy to have the collector's edition, because I'm a sucker for game soundtracks. And I guess that's all I really have to talk say about this, but look it up. Um, look it up, look at some gameplay, and check it out, because it might be one of those RPGs you might want to get into. And I think it's only on PS3. Oh, it's also a Koei Tecmo game published by NIS America. So, so that's interesting. I haven't picked up a lot of Koei Tecmo stuff, so that, that makes that one even more interesting. Anyway, the last game of my second one to talk about is a game called Fairy Fencer F. And again, this is the NIS America exclusive collector's edition. Uh, I grabbed this one late. I wasn't going to buy this game because I was gonna I was gonna skip it. It didn't look all that interesting, but the closer it got to release, and the more I saw of the game, and the more my friend was talking about it, the more I wanted it. So, pre-ordered it. I got the collector's edition. This comes with an art book, the game, and a soundtrack. And this has been sucking up all of my time. I've pumped about ten hours into this so far, and it's absolutely incredible. It's a pretty standard RPG. You play as a character named Fang, who goes around... And he pulls a sword out of the ground because he's hungry, and he hears that if you pull a sword out of the ground, you get your wish comes true. So he wishes for food and pulls the sword out. And it turns out to be a fairy. And the fairy says, to, in order to grant your wish, you have to help me find all 100 fairies and free the goddess that protects the world. And, he, and he's like, okay, I guess. I mean, he's extraordinarily reluctant, but he goes along anyway. Because she kind of annoys him until he finally says fine. And that's the game. Um, basically you go around, you quest for these fairies, and then you use the fairies to go into what's called the God Revival room, which is, they have the God of Darkness, I, I think he's called the Vile God, and the Goddess of Light, and you choose a sword to combine with your fairy, and then when you pull the sword out, you get, you unlock that bit of the Goddess until she's free, or the Vile God, if you're, if you're more amped to go that way. Um, which I pulled a few swords out from the Vile God because they match up better with the fairies that I have. Um, the combat system's interesting. It's it's like it plays a lot like um, Fairy Fencer F, or excuse me, um, Hyper Dimension Neptunia MK2, wherein you have a certain circle of activity somewhere where you can move, and then your attacks have a certain circle, and so that's basically it. And you can, as you as you level up, you grow, you get more combos and more abilities. And the one thing they do, they do in this game is a thing called Fair Rise, which is you when you hit a certain... I guess it's like a limit break in, in fantasy, Final Fantasy. But basically, you fill up a meter, and when you get up to that point, you can Fair Rise, and that boosts your stats and gives you access to other abilities. It's like a, it's like a, a Power Ranger-like thing. Like you, you morph into this armored character, you know, with all this hanging, floating shit all over you. It's great. Um, the music is amazing. The soundtrack is great. I'm so happy to have the, to have purchased the soundtrack for this. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. There's something about this game. It's it's not any better than other RPGs I've played, to be honest. I mean, but there's something about it that keeps me going. That keeps me looking. It keeps me wanting to see more of the game, and I don't really know what that is. the The art style is is nice, and the like I said, the music is great and the combat's interesting. Um, one thing I do like about the combat system is you can hold down the L2 trigger and that skips everybody's animations. So as long as you hold that down, you can just blaze through battles easy. And so it makes leveling a lot less headache-inducing um, and you just get things done a lot quicker. So if I need to get, say, more money to buy a particular piece of armor that I want, I can just go into a dungeon and quest around for a bit, and, and in, you know, five minutes do what would have taken a general RPG years ago a couple of, you know, a good hour to do. So, 
it basically cuts your time in half. Um, yeah, this is this is a hidden gem to be to be completely honest. For anybody who hasn't heard of this game, again, look it up. Look at gameplay footage. Look at trailers. Um, and and just and just see if it's for you. Because I honestly, I'm so happy I picked this up, and I almost, like I said, let it let it slip through my fingers. And I've been doing nothing but playing it ever since I got it. It's it's absolutely incredible. I highly recommend this game uh, to anybody. And uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. it. Like I said, it's not any, it's not terribly better than any other RPG, but there's just something about it that is so refreshing. Um, the humor, the the characters, the way the characters interact with each other. Uh, obviously, you pick up more fencers, what are called fencers, as the game goes on. So, and the game is just beautiful to look at. Uh, although, what's funny is when you get into a dungeon, the game t tends to lag. I think it's kind of interesting, given that's what you're going to be doing most of the t of the time. It seems like the frame rate goes down to you know twenty frames per second or something when you're on an overworld, but and that's okay because that's a very understandable portion of this game, and it's not really what makes the game compelling. Um, but yeah, check it out; it's great. Anyway, that is everything. I think that was ten games, two, four. 11, 11 games uh, that I have to talk about. Um, hopefully I'll have Smash Brothers for Wii U when that launches in November, and Bayonetta 2 when that launches later this month on the 24th. Um, both of which I'll just pick up at a local store. I don't plan on pre-ordering them, but... Uh, and I don't think I have any other pre-orders coming out. Oh, I do have one for Vita, but I'll get around to that when, when the time comes. Anyway, that is everything for this collection update. I hope you saw some games you're interested in. I can highly recommend Fairy Fencer F if you have a PS3. Uh, Super Smash Brothers 4. Anybody and everybody who knows anything about it because it's interesting. And Akiba's Trip if you're if you have a Vita and you want something to play. Um, and of course I can recommend Mario Kart 8 but then again so has everybody else. Um, anyway that should do it for me. That should be everything. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys again saw something you were interested in, and I will see you guys on the next collection update.